All right. Welcome back to another Krita tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over the arrange docker. And just real quick, if you go to the Krita manual to look it up on your own, it's um, kind of got not forgotten. It just didn't get uploaded or um, put in the manual yet. So the developers are going to be doing that and hopefully it should be up by the end of the month. Uh, so you, if you want a breakdown of the tool and everything of what it does, you can take a look and read that for yourself. Otherwise, uh, hopefully what I, I do today will be enough to get you started. Alright, so as always, if you go to settings under dockers, it will be right here under anima animation curves. And then this is how the docker looks over here. So we're just going to make a couple shapes and some really nice pretty obnoxious looking colors, right? And say we'll fill this one as well. Ooh, I'm gonna do like a weird pink salmon. Okay. So I have three vector shapes here. And this only works for the vector shapes. And I want to align these three vector shapes together on the left. Now I'm not saying align, align them based on the canvas to the left. It's going to be based on the bounding boxes of these three shapes. So as you can see here, it may be empty space, but this bounding box kind of ends like right at this edge here. And same with, you know, the widest points basically. So if I were to take this purple one here, uh, the blue is the farthest to the left, so I want everything to be lined to the left. And I click on this one here. And those two, the uh, box in the weird pink salmon colored shape I made, is going to be aligned to the left based on the blue. Now if I were to take the purple box and want everything aligned to the left, I can click that. And whatever is farthest to the left, the other shapes will follow. So if you do this here, you can do it to the right. So if I want it all to go to do this shape to the right follows that whatever is farthest on the right and now for the middle same thing put that there and it all comes together in the middle so we're just going to re rearrange this all right so and then there's other options here so we can do it to the top um, the center and then the bottom so we'll do that just to show you that real quick. The bottom. So now everything's lined up really evenly on the bottom. And this is nice if you're doing some test layouts, maybe for a web designer or something, and you just want to make it even. You're not like sitting here going, okay, I got to move this manually. Yeah, that looks right. It saves you a little bit of time. All right, so now we're going to go to distribute. But this one, uh, a little more interesting. I'm going to undo that real quick. So it's kind of distributing everything based on space. It's going to try to make it as even as possible. So as you can see, when I clicked one of these, it tried to even this out. So let's kind of move it and do some crazy stuff here. All right. So it's not, I mean, it's kind of trying to distribute this based, what is this, distribute left edges. I mean, it's trying, but these are not great shapes do this with. So we can do this one. So it's, try, it's trying to make sure that the spacing is even between all the shapes. I don't personally really understand how it does it, like, because it seems to, the more I click it, the more it tries to move. So I don't know if maybe I'm misunderstanding that tool, or maybe it's just you keep clicking and I'll keep fine tuning it for you. But that's fine. All right, and then we can go to spacing and click, what is this one again? Make the horizontal gaps between objects equal. And there really aren't any gaps, so let's try and make some. So we'll select all that. Yeah, it looks pretty equal to me. And so this gap here and this gap here. Let's try the, hor the uh, vertical. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it did it. 
I mean, it kind of looks like it, but... Yeah. Spacing isn't perfect. The only thing I... Well, I don't want to say the only thing, but the, what I like the most about this is I can group and ungroup, like, pretty quick. So now it's one group. And I can just go here and ungroup it. And that just kind of makes it a little bit easier versus right-clicking all the time, because... If you're like me, you click on the wrong stuff, and it's just crazy. And then you can change the order. Um, basically, the order means what's in front and what's in back. So if I have that purple square and I want it to come to the front, I can click that until it's at the very front, or I can send it to the back. Same with this. I can have it in between. What? I'm sorry, bring to front. Look, I'm reading the boxes wrong. You go to the back. This can be at the same level. So, some the back, lower. That's actually really weird. Oh no, I'm reading this wrong. I'm sorry. So I'm thinking. I don't know what I'm thinking. It's late. I'm not making this video. I think I'm just losing my mind tonight. I'm used to the Illustrator icons, and I think that's throwing me off too. Okay, so we'll do this over. So we'll do the purple square. We'll bring it to the front. And then if you want to bring it to the back, you can set it back one or all the way back. Or if you want the blue circle at the very back, you can click of a button. And then we can bring it up one to cover the square. It's basically like layers without making layers. And that's it for the range docker. So I hope this video was kind of helpful, and hopefully if you're interested in the vector shapes, um, that this kind of helps you with some organization, um, especially if, you know, if you're just starting off and want to play around with what you can do, um, at least the order in the group, you know, it, it's kind of my favorite and it's something that I will be using a lot when I do my vector shapes. So yeah, uh, that's it for the arranged docker, and I think... Now we have officially gone over all the dockers. Maybe. I think I have. I'll, I'll look and research that. Alright, uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future tutorials I go over. I thought I didn't have anything to go over, but I was able to talk to some people in the Creative Developer chat, like uh, what they would like to see. I got some ideas uh, coming out, or at least some ideas from that, and um, a few other uh, things I haven't covered yet based on comments that you guys have left me. So yeah, uh, if you also want to support me, all my social media links are either on my YouTube channel or in the comment or in the video description. And yeah, that's about it. I will see you guys in the next video.